Hello, my name's Chris, and I've been a teacher of economics and business studies for the last 27 years. So today we're going to look at supply and demand and the market equilibrium. So let's have a look what our lesson names are going to be. We're going to look at understanding what the market equilibrium is, understand how the shift in the supply curve will affect the market price, and our shift in the demand curve will affect the market price. Understand what happens if the price level is not at the equilibrium level. level. So this term equilibrium is very important. So I'm going to move on and we're going to look at what equilibrium means. So here we have the supply and the demand curve drawn on the same axis. And we can see that where the two cross, we've got a price level and a quantity level. Now, what we've really got here is PE and QE. Price at the equilibrium level and the quantity at the equilibrium level. At this point, demand is equal to supply. All the goods supplied are consumed. This is the equilibrium point. So where they cross over is the equilibrium point. And therefore, we have an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity. At the point, supply equals demand. All the goods that are supplied to the market are sold. Right, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So consumer and consumer uh, consumer and producer surplus at the equilibrium. All the way along our supply curve, producers can supply the product at different prices. So towards the axis here, the suppliers can produce a good very cheaply. Well, they're going to gain massively from selling it at the equilibrium price. And this area here is called the producer surplus. Let me just draw in a producer surplus. So this area here is the producer surplus. All the way along this line, producers can supply the good at a price that is actually lower than the equilibrium. Because of the market is determining the price for this product, and it's determined the price at PE, they're actually going to make more money because there's a difference in what they can produce for as to what they can sell it for. The less efficient producers will be producing the product nearer to the um, equilibrium price and those at the equilibrium will be breaking even essentially. So let's clear those drawings. At the top here, oh, let me just uh, clear that. So at the top here, we've got consumers that will happily pay more money for the product than the market price. So those people are gaining this area here. This is what we call a consumer surplus. So there are people that would happily pay a price for this product up here, high, let's call it a price, high, a high price. So we call it pH. And they quite happily pay that high price at this point to gain that product. But they don't need to because the market price is PE. So they're actually gaining. So they're not having to spend all this extra money they're actually paying a much lower price than they're willing to pay. And that happens all the way along this curve until you meet this point where those people are the people that would have been happy to pay at PE. All the others are actually gained beyond that point.
extraction methods. It could be a new source of a raw material has been found that's cheaper to extract, anything like that. So here, the supply curve is shifted to the right. And effectively, it moves along the demand curve and settles at a new point. So the equilibrium price has fallen from P to P1. This means that more people are happy to pay for that product. So more consumers, we can see that we got a shift, uh, sorry, an extension of the demand curve. And so they are consuming more of that product because it's at a lower price. So previously, the people in this area wouldn't actually be able to afford to buy the product or unable to access that product. So with the shift in the supply curve, more being supplied, the market price falling, that means more people can buy this product. So we've got this movement along the curve and we're shifting the amount that we can consume from Q to Q1. If the opposite happens, if the supply curve shifts to the left for some reason, it could be uh, a bad harvest, so there's a shortage of, of wheat or apples or something like that, or a factory's gone and striked and a product's not being supplied, then we could get a shift to the left, which means we're moving up the demand curve. Okay, we're contracting the demand curve and then causing a price increase because things are less on the ground. So we can move our quantity from Q to Q1. Let's clear all those drawings again. So what if supply and demand increase or decrease at the same rate? Well, let's draw some lines on here. So if demand increases or shifts to the right, like so, I will call that D1. I'm just going to extend this line here across. We can also shift the supply curve like so. So if they shift at equal rates, the price remains the same, but we can increase the quantity being supplied and consumed. Let me just label that up there and correct this label down here. There we go. So we've shifted both the supply and the demand curves. Let me just move this out of the way. Oh, didn't want that to happen. Oh, it's not letting me delete that one. So let me just uh, put in D1 again. There we go. Ignore that one. Uh, we can see that supply and the demand curves have shifted equally across to the right, creating a new equilibrium point at the same price, but we're having more of that product consumed. So we're shifting to Q1. So the prices remain the same, but the quantity consumed and supplied has increased. Now that's a rare occurrence where supply and demand increase equally. You can imagine in the real world, that's a hard point to meet. Let's clear all those drawings and move this on so we can see, there we go, the answer to the price will remain the same, 
but the quantity will increase. And you'll notice that these lines are parallel to each other. So the demand lines are parallel and the supply lines are parallel, which is shifting across to the right on both of them. If the opposite happens, so if they both shift to the left, then we get the price staying the same, but the quantity, the equilibrium quantity reducing from Q to Q1. Okay, so we can see that shift to the left. So if we shift demand, we can see we extend the supply curve and we shift our price up to P1. So our market clearing price is now P1 and our market clearing quantity is Q1. So this is assuming that supply remains exactly the same. Demand has increased, supply has remained the same, which means our price has gone up because more of the product is demanded. Just go back to that one. So if the demand shifts to the left, in other words, demand changes and essentially falls for the product, perhaps it could be that there's a health scare on that product, then there'll be oversupply of that product and it will mean a market adjustment with the price falling from P to P1. And obviously the quantity moving from Q to Q1. So our new equilibrium price is at a lower price to shift our product. So what happens if the market price, for some reason, is higher than the equilibrium? Remember our equilibrium point is here where demand equals supply. If it's higher, if the price for the product is higher than the equilibrium price point, then we have what we call excess supply. So the space between those two means we've got more supply to the market than actually consumers are willing to buy. So we're gonna have product left on the shelves. So the difference between QD and QS is our excess supply. So QS minus QD equals our excess supply. So we're gonna have product remaining on the shelf if the price is higher than the equilibrium price. Now, if the opposite is true, where we've got demand outstripping supply, then we're going to have excess demand. So if the price is at a quite lower level than um, the equilibrium price, so there, then we're going to have excess supply. Sorry, excess demand, because it's cheaper than the market price should be at this level of supply and demand. So let's put that in here. So QD minus QS at this point is excess demand. So our excess demand is this between those two points. So let's have a look at some real world examples. Now, quite often we get uh, a new console released. We generally have a shortage of that console. So they set a market price for that, not knowing what the demand will be. And usually what happens is they're sold out immediately. So the supply is less than the demand. 
So we have excess demand. Now, what generally happens then is you find that on reselling marketplaces like eBay, uh, the price is much higher uh, to buy these consoles, these new consoles that people are desperate to get their hands on. Okay, so that's a real world example. Uh, games consoles generally always sell out when they first put on the market. Another real world example, we've got oil. Now we've just come out of our uh, lockdowns and so people are starting to drive their cars more and demand for petrol and diesel has shifted to the right. Supply hasn't changed, demand has shifted to the right, forcing petrol and diesel prices upwards from P to P1. So unless we increase supply, and we could increase supply, so people like OPEC, who control the supply of oil from the Middle East, could effectively increase their supply quite easily and maintain the price, but they're probably quite enjoying the fact that um, they're making excess money on their supply. So, a shift in demand there, causing prices of petrol and diesel to go up. Good summer, nice and sunny, rain at the right times, can increase harvest yields in the fields. And so shift in supply outwards to the right, causing a movement along the demand curve making equilibrium price fall from P to P1. So because the yields are higher, so they're getting more grain per acre, then the price will fall. So exam tips, draw your diagrams big enough and fully label them. Don't try and show multiple shifts on one diagram draw more than one diagram. If you're drawing multiple shifts on one diagram, it's gonna get really confusing. Okay, so I'd rather see as an examiner more than one diagram showing the process you're going through and referring to your diagram within the answer to the question. The diagrams are there to support your answer. If you don't refer to them, they are pointless. So make sure you draw them big enough Show single shifts or one or two shifts on a diagram, but not multiples of shifts. Just draw different diagrams and then refer to your diagram in answering the question. So hopefully we've now met our learning aims for this session, understanding what the market equilibrium is, how shifts in the supply curve will affect the market price and how shift in the demand curve will affect the market price. Understand what happens if the price level is not at the equilibrium. Thank you for joining me today. Hopefully that was useful.